everybody, I'm Karina and this is Phoebe and this is Penelope. This week's video is going to be part two of a three-part series regarding feeding these little ones. Today's video will be about dehydrating, why I dehydrate, a couple of the steps involving some of the popular items that I dehydrate, as well as a staple list that I always have on hand. I'll talk more about the individual ingredients benefits that I include in their dry food mix and always have on hand as well. Let's get into it! During the dehydrating process, the water content of the fruits and vegetables is removed. Despite this, if properly dried, the food maintains nearly all of its vitamins and minerals. They do lose some volatile nutrients like vitamin C, but overall, if properly dehydrated, the vegetables and fruits can retain their nutritional content have a longer shelf life, and it can help reduce waste in the home if you use ingredients like I do that are extra from when I prepared the frozen diet for both the parrots and the rats. In today's video, I'll be dehydrating various items that I use for the rats as treats, as well as ingredients that are a part of their dry food diet, which includes cranberries, kale, broccoli, and banana chips. I have all of those items on hand at all times as they each serve a specific purpose in my care for the rats. The other items kind of change based on what I have available. I started off with drying a couple different fruits that could be dried at 135 degrees Fahrenheit in my dehydrator. The blueberries were first to be prepared. Some say you can boil them and blanch them to crack open their skin. Others say you can simply cut them in half or poke them. I went with the cutting in half option. The apples are also pretty simple in their preparation. I just washed them beforehand and now I'm going to cut them up into thin slices. I am just showing you guys here, which I hope you already know, never to feed your rats any seeds or part of the core. These seeds contain trace amounts of arsenic, which is of course bad for your rats. I hope you can see here that this is just about how thin I am cutting the apple slices. Just like with the blueberries, I am placing all of the apple slices evenly across the dehydrating trays. There was no additional preparation needed for the strawberries other than washing them and cutting off the tops. You are supposed to cut them at a quarter of an inch thick and I was planning to do that. I just didn't execute it as well as I thought I did and the pieces did come out super thin. They did just dry a little bit quicker than everything else. They do say eight hours, but I think it took maybe six or less. And once again, the pieces were super thin, still edible, but I will absolutely do them thicker next time. I will say that they smell absolutely delicious while dehydrating and after. I keep bananas in a variety of forms at the house, frozen, fresh, and dried. They are easily digestible calories and the rats and parrots both love them. I personally love having the frozen bananas on hand just so that when the rats get sick, which knock on wood hasn't happened anytime soon, but if they do, the bananas are a great way to get calories in them. The preparation for dehydrating them is just removing the outside peel and cutting up the inside pieces into thin slices so that they dehydrate evenly. I will say I will go thinner on the next batch, but I will maintain some of the pieces cut in half and others whole discs, as I do give some to the rats and some to the parrots. The cranberries need to be properly popped in boiling water before they are placed on the trays evenly to dehydrate. This allows the water to escape from them evenly. I love having cranberries on hand as they are high in antioxidants and are great for long-term health and well-being of your rats. They're good for UTIs and are very helpful if your rat is prone to various infections. You can feed them too much, which will upset their stomach, so make sure you feed them a balanced diet. Once all of your desired fruits that can be dehydrated at the same temperature or evenly placed on the trays, you can start dehydrating. These are all the estimated drying times. It can be more or less depending on how thick you cut your items. Now it is time to move on to the vegetables, which I am starting with the carrots. On some websites, it may say to blanch the carrots first. Others, I found it was okay to just peel the carrots and then slice them into thin pieces. And eventually, if the pieces did get too wide of a disc, you could then cut them in half. I did have to prepare some of the other foods like the green bean and broccoli by boiling it first and then placing it in ice cold water afterwards. 
I had started boiling the water when I started cutting up the carrots, just so that as soon as the water did start to boil, I could jump over and do that and maximize the amount of stuff I was getting done at once. Jumping back to the carrots, I'm just cutting them up here. I will say they did shrivel up quite a bit and ended up falling through a lot of the different holes in the trays of my dehydrator. Otter, as usual, is being a big help. Not. I will say she completely dumped my dehydrating trays when I had them filled with kale. And here's little Mr. Reed, Weedy, Weedster. He's blind and deaf, so he just gets special treatment. I had actually picked him up and put him on the island because this is where we feed him. And he was on the other counter trying to jump through the dehydrating trays and pot. He definitely got what he wanted and was fed as I continue to lay out the different pieces of carrot throughout the trays. Now I'm moving on to the green beans, which are once again blanched. They are now cooled and I am just cutting off any decaying parts and the tops and bottoms so that they're all uniform. They too are getting laid out evenly on the trays. I have a tendency to have a lot of green beans on hand at different times of the year as both the rats and birds have their frozen food mix that involves putting green beans in it. Broccoli is sort of a rat superfood and I offer it both in dry form in their dry food mix and I include it in their fresh food mix as well. It is high in vitamin C and K, which does degrade in the dehydrating process, which is why I keep it in the fresh food as well. That being said, broccoli, even while dehydrated, has a variety of vitamins and minerals. They have good levels of antioxidants, and overall, broccoli is just a wonderful staple in the rat's diet, as it doesn't contain a lot of calories, and it can help your rat maintain a non-fat rat body. The broccoli just needed to be blanched, which you saw a little bit ago, and then sliced into thin pieces and laid out evenly. I have read that some people make their own green broccoli powder out of dehydrated broccoli, but I am just going to keep it in its little cut up full form rather than blend it up. I am just showing you here what my dehydrator looks like, as I didn't show with the fruit portion, but here for the vegetables I am just setting it to 125 degrees, and here is a rough estimate of the times that it takes to dehydrate the foods, but just make sure that you do check the foods periodically to ensure that they're drying properly and evenly. Kale was the last thing that I dehydrated and I had actually purchased pre-washed and cut up kale. So after looking through it, making sure there were no overly decayed pieces, I just added it to the dehydrator and laid it out evenly. It dehydrated within eight hours and was crispy and hard. Don't wanna introduce kale too fast as it can upset their stomach. But with that, kale is a fantastic food option to give your rats. It is full of essential vitamins and minerals while being low in calorie and high in fiber, which makes it another ideal option for your rats who are trying to maintain a healthy weight and not a fat rat body. You want to mark the date that you dehydrated the foods so that you know when you did it and they don't go bad or sit in your cupboard too long. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for next week's video about the rat's dry food mix. You can creep around and find the rat's fresh food mix last week and also some other tarantula videos and just all my pets. I will absolutely be posting more every Friday. I do plan to have more tarantula content up after the holidays and I do have a couple birthdays in the family. So once that's done, I'll definitely get some more tarantula enclosure build videos up as well as redoing this lady's enclosure because she has a little bit of a mold problem, but that's an easy fix. I just have to take everything down and clean it.